If a candidate goes over their allotted time, you'll hear this. It sounds like a game show, but it's not. Question. You can I'm happy time. to answer your question. Let me tell you how the question is. It's presidential debate time again. And this time around, it's the Democrats who have to deal with having too many candidates. Some people are calling it a grown-up's table and a kid's table. <laughs> you know, I'm not excited about being at a kiddie table. On June 26th and 27th, the top 20 Democratic presidential candidates go head-to-head -head in Miami, kicking off arguably the most important televised event of the 2020 primary so far. But with 20 slots to play for and nearly two dozen contenders, not all made the cut. The unlucky ones included Steve Bullock, Seth Moulton, and Wayne Messam. To avoid a kids table style debate where lesser known candidates appeared on a different night, the top candidates were placed in a separate draw to make sure that some of the biggest names were on stage both nights. And a second drawing was held to mix up the lesser known candidates. The first night includes the likes of Elizabeth Warren, Cory Booker, and Amy Klobuchar. And on the second night, Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders go up against Kamala Harris and Pete Buttigieg, along with some lesser known candidates like Marianne Williamson and Andrew Yang. The final results? It's worth noting that Biden and Sanders, who have been 1-2 in most national polls, will get the chance to face each other in person, but Sanders and Warren, who are competing for a similar pool of liberal voters, won't. The race started three months ago when the DNC announced the rules for qualification and it left some candidates fighting for a spot. Here's how it played out. To qualify for the debates, candidates needed to either achieve at least 1% in three national or early primary state polls or raise money from at least 65,000 donors, including a minimum of 200 each in 20 states. Polling gave candidates who have national support a shot at the debates. For some of the well-known candidates like Biden, Sanders, and Warren, this was an easy win. But for some like Michael Bennett and Bill de Blasio, it wasn't so easy and they barely made it. Then there was a separate push for the donor threshold. The DNC said it introduced this rule to encourage candidates to connect with grassroots voters and show they had the financial support to run a campaign. And with the stakes so high, candidates pulled out all the stops on digital marketing. There was beer pong. Babies. John Delaney took to a whiteboard and told potential donors he'd give two dollars to charity for every one dollar donated. So click on, give me a dollar, and uh, I'll give two dollars to any number of these very, very worthy uh, organizations. Others, like Tulsi Gabbard, used Instagram and Twitter to update their progress. Andrew Yang and the so-called Yang Gang got creative with memes. The DNC said 14 candidates met both criteria and six qualified through polling only. The same requirements will be used for the July debate in Detroit, but in September, it'll get much tougher. Candidates will need 130,000 donors and at least 2% in four early polls. Currently, more than half of the candidates are at risk of falling short.